Hello there, welcome to lesson number 10 in our series on um, using Fluid Designer for 3D printing to create bracelets. Um, in today's lesson we're going to show you how you can use a parametric equation to create a cartonoid bracelet. Um, so if you start off Fluid Designer, the first thing you need to do is to go to Learning Projects, Jewelry Projects, Bracelets. And we're doing lesson number 10, so we scroll down to number 10 and drag and drop that onto the workspace. So this is the object that we're actually going to create. So it's a cartonoid shape uh, and uh, we're going to recreate that in the form of a bracelet. Now I'm going to start the dis screencast dis uh, um, function. So any key presses I make will be displayed in the lower window corner of the window here and uh, remind you that the help instructions are in the help window on the left. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to add a mesh, uh, a math function and an XYZ math surface. So we go to add mesh, math function, XYZ math surface. Now this brings up this panel here, so this toolbox window must be open. If it's not open, you can always press T on the keyboard to open it. And the panel at the bottom should also be open. Um, now if we uh, just zoom in at this uh, object at the moment, so zoom to selected, what you'll see is the actual shape, the default shape, is a shell. And this shell is created by using an X equation, a y equation and a z equation. Now it is possible to go onto the internet and find information about um, other uh, types of equations like these parametric equations uh, and if you go to our help page on our website at fluiddesigner.co.uk and scroll down to the bottom of the help window you'll find links there to uh, websites where you can actually find equations like this. We're going to uh, use the equations that are listed here. So for the x equation we need to delete the equation that's currently there. So I just press the backspace key to delete it and I need to type in 2 times, that's 2 star, cosh bracket v divided by 2, close bracket, times cos bracket u. And you'll see that the uh, function changes now, or change, changes appearance now, the object, because we've got this different equation in now. Um, now for the y equation we need to type in just the value v, or the variable I should say v, and again that changes the shape of uh, our object. And then finally the third equation, because this is three dimensional object, so we need three equations, um, I'm going to sort of uh, paste this in, it's uh, 2 cosh v divided by 2, um, so it's a little bit similar to the first equation, so instead of cos u, we need sine u. And I'm just scrolling out now to see what we've got, well, it doesn't quite look like the original one at the moment, because there are still some other variables that we need to change. So the next thing we need to change is the u min value. Now at the moment u min is 0 and the value we've got to enter is minus 3.14. If you remember back to your maths days you probably remember something maths called pi, 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 which you used with uh, circles, um, area of circles and the circumference of circles. Well that's what 3.14 is, pi. And similarly u max here we've got, we need to enter 3.14, at the moment it's 6.28, so that's actually 2 times pi. We can actually set it back to just pi, a value of 3.14. Um, U steps we can leave. Um, we can untick U wrap. And we can set V min as minus 3.14 as, again and v max as 3.14. So these are again pi. And um, if we now go view and zoom to selected, 
you'll see that the shape that we've got, although it's much smaller than the finished object, because it's only 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters, it is this cartonoid shape. Okay, so um, if we try ticking new mit, new wrap, doesn't make any difference in this instance. V wrap doesn't make any difference. Oh, it does make some difference. Sorry, yes, it completely changes it. Look. Um, so yeah, another another shape there just by ticking V wrap. It uh, puts a solid around the outside of the object, a solid circle around the outside of the object there. So that's interesting. And close V, you know, that doesn't seem to make any difference. So we can play around with these variables and come up with other uh, shapes. But we're going to stick with that. Um, so we now can uh, shut that panel away. And I'll just uh, shut that window down slightly as well. And uh, what we want to do now is we want to scale this object up, scale it up so that um, we've got a, a suitable inner diameter uh, to put uh, so that the object will go over your wrist. So if we press S on the keyboard and uh, whoops, that's uh, scaled it up probably a little bit too much, and uh, we drag the mouse out, you can see that we can resize this object. Okay, now what we need to do is, um, based upon uh, your wrist measurements, you would want to change the inside of this object. Um, now, a way to size, well, one way to size, if we, if, we look at, um, if we look at view and front, for example, now we're actually in perspective mode here, so it looks a, it looks a little bit odd. We can see the back of the object. So if we just toggle this and change from perspective to ortho mode, ortho mode so we want front ortho that gives us a better uh, um, appearance of the object so we can see the circle properly now so we could measure this and uh, it is 40 millimeters at the moment approximately so let's uh, let's imagine that we want uh, an inner diameter of say 50 millimeters so what we can do is we can add a mesh and add a cylinder. And uh, if we say it's 50 millimeters, we can change this value to 50 mm for millimeters and change the Y value to 50 mm for millimeters. Um, now notice that the circle that I've just created is at a different direction from what we need. So one of the things we need to do now is to rotate this uh, this cylinder that we've just created. And uh, this is the x-axis, the uh, red arrow. So we could, we could rotate it here by clicking. And you can see that that's rotating it around the x-axis. But if I just type in 90 for 90 degrees, you'll see that I have, in fact, rotated that uh, cylinder now so it is facing in the right direction what we could do um, now is uh, highlight our well let's first of all let's go to view and front again and uh, if we highlight our cartonoid and uh, point the mouse at the center again and if i press uh, s and scale it up okay now let me actually point the mouse out here and press S to scale, scale it up. It'll probably give me a little bit better control. Yes, it does. So we want to ex uh, we want to increase the size of this object until it just fits around that cylinder. Okay, so we've scaled it up to 50. Now it's not quite the same size as the one at the bottom. Um, that's probably got a diameter of uh, 40 or 45. Now, whenever you're scaling Fluid Designer, you must always open up the toolbox and check the resize vector. These values should be 1 when you're 3D printing. Whenever you scale, you've always got to reset them. And you do that by holding down the Control key and pressing A. And applying the scale, that uh, means the tick here means the scale is now set back to its correct value. OK, so we've applied the scale. Um, we can now delete this cylinder in the center. We do need to make sure that we highlight it. Um, let's view it from the front. There's the XYZ function. Um, 
that should be this it's not the cylinder is it I'm not selecting the cylinder somehow um, there it is I've collect, selected the cylinder this time um, if I highlight the cylinder and press X on the keyboard and delete it and then I can highlight the original XYZ function and press X on the keyboard and delete that now this object has got no thickness it's just a shell at the moment so we do need to apply some thickness to this and we can do that in fluid designer by using the modifiers and we're going to add a modifier a solidify modifier and um, you should have seen this before we're going to apply a thickness of two millimeters and what is important is that the thickness actually goes on the outside of the object not on the inside and we can test that by just changing the offset we don't want to offset it on the inside we want to keep our inner dimension as 50 millimeters we'll just double check it if we go to view in front and if we just zoom in and we just uh, use our ruler we'll see that it is still it is still 50 millimeters I I think I started a little bit too low yeah it's still 50 millimeters there um, so we've applied the offset as, as, as a negative value so it's put the thickness on the outside and then we can apply that by selecting tools object tools and converting it to a mesh that will apply the modifier so we can move that out of the way now um, now this uh, object I did lift it up from the origin so um, if you want you can um, go to cursor and snap the selection to the cursor that will snap it back to the origin or you could have just dragged it down so there's our cartonoid bracelet now it is pretty massive to be honest it's not really the kind of thing you might want to print it could well be just much too big but it gives you an idea of the sort of thing that you can do in fluid designer um, so what we can do is save that now so if we go to file and always go to save as go up through the menu system go to my projects jewelry projects bracelets and we can save lesson 010 and we can save that as a blender file you can't print blender files so you need to uh, export this and we use the wavefront obj format and we export it to the desktop as cartonoid bracelet obj file and then you should always go to netfab basic and uh, open this uh, file parametric cartonoid bracelet to see if there are any issues with it okay so um, if we go to extras and repair the part and I just move the window across um, you'll see that netfab has made some changes to this mesh it's actually triangulated it all but if I click on update here you'll see there are no border edge problems no orientation and no holes and if we run automatic repair and execute it we always recommend you do this and click update again uh, and then click apply repair and remove the old part um, that uh, object now should be in a printable file format um, so again um, what we need to do is to go to part and export it as a wavefront object and uh, save it to the desktop and uh, netfab basic adds a little bit of text repair to the end and so when you save that that file is the repaired file and that is the printable file so uh, there's a cartonoid bracelet created using parametric equations in fluid designer for 3d printing so that's it that's the end of uh, this lesson thank you